from the epistle of the Holy Apostle Paul to the Galatians. Let us be attentive. Brethren, we know that a person is justified not by the works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. And we have come to believe in Christ Jesus, so that we may be justified by faith in Christ and not by doing the works of the law, because no one will be justified by the works of the law. But if, in our efforts to be justified in Christ, we ourselves have been found to be sinners, is Christ then a servant of sin? Certainly not. But if I build up again the very things that I once tore down, then I demonstrate that I am a transgressor. For through the law I died to the law, so that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Hallelujah. Moses and the prophets, 
they will not be convinced, even if one should rise from the dead. Glory be to you, O Lord. Glory be to you. Slava Jesus Christ. Amen. Name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dearly beloved in Christ, in today's gospel lesson, Jesus tells us the parable about the rich man. And Lazarus. The rich man was very well off. He had a fancy home. He had all kinds of luxuries. He was not wanting for anything. Lazarus, however, was very poor. He had nothing. He was always in the dire need of the bare necessities in life. We are told that he stayed by the gates of the rich man's home. He was constantly in want, constantly in need. We can all learn a very valuable lesson from this parable. The rich man was very self-centered and only cared about himself. He probably did not even notice Lazarus constantly begging for the scraps of food which were being fed to the dogs. The rich man showed no compassion to Lazarus. He would not even lift a finger to offer Lazarus any help. The rich man's sin was not that he was wealthy, or that he enjoyed a good and prosperous life. It was how he treated Lazarus. Instead of trying to help him in any way possible, the rich man totally ignored him. We are told that the dogs treated Lazarus better than the rich man. At least they acknowledged his presence, whereas the rich man totally ignore him. Let us now consider how we treat our neighbor who is in need. We may not be as rich as was the rich man. However, we may still have much to offer. Sometimes just listening to our neighbor or friend may be of great help. We can offer words of encouragement instead of criticism. We can visit a sick individual instead of leaving it to someone else. We can participate and volunteer in church activities instead of leaving it up to someone else. We can donate to a charity instead of leaving it up to someone else. We can take the time to vote in the upcoming election. The rich man had had a great opportunity to help Lazarus. He was well off and could have done much. However, he chose to do nothing. Let us not be like the rich man. Instead, let us try to see to the needs of our brothers and sisters in whatever way that we can. After all, Jesus tells us what you did for one of the least ones you did for me. When we look at Jesus throughout the Gospel, we see that he is always helping someone. He heals the sick and returns sight to the blind. Lepers are cleansed. He sees that the hungry are fed. Jesus always looked after the needs of everyone. The rich man 
failed to be concerned about the needs of others, and in the end, he wound up with nothing. Lazarus suffered much during his lifetime, but he achieved paradise. Our future is in our hands. The manner in which we lead our lives influences how we will wind up. Slavi Susukristo. Let us all sing her whole soul, her whole mind. Let us say, Lord, have mercy. Almighty Lord, God our fathers, we pray you hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on us, O God, in the greatness of your compassion. We pray you hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We also pray for our most holy and our soul pontiff, Francis Pope of Rome, for our most blessed patriarchs, Yakos for our most reverend metropolitan Boris, our God-loving Bishop Andre, for those who serve and have served in this holy church, for our spiritual fathers, and for our brethren in Christ. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. We also pray for our nation under God, for our government, and for all the military. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. We also pray for the people here present, who await your great and bountiful mercy for those who have been kind to us, and for all true believing Christians. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. For you, our merciful, loving God, we give glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy <coughs> Spirit, now and forever and ever. Amen. Again, 
me, I confess to you. Remember me, O Lord, when you come into your kingdom. Remember me, O Master, when you come into your kingdom. Remember me, O Holy One, when you come into your kingdom. May the partaking of your holy mysteries, O Lord, be unto me not for judgment or condemnation, but for the healing of soul and body. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. God, cleanse me of my sins and have mercy on me. I have sinned without number. Forgive me, O Lord. Approach with the fear of God and with faith. Blessed is you who come to the day.
our government and to all your people. For all good giving of your perfect gifts from above, coming down from you, the Father, our lights, that we give glory, thanks, and worship to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. session of marriage. 